you know how to calculate formal charges, and of course, carbon being the focus of organic molecules is often the focus of our attention regarding charges, too. Let me just take a look at this simple molecule. Using our bond line convention for representing a structure, you know that there are carbon atoms at the ends and at the breaks. So there are four carbon atoms in this molecule. And let me ask you to calculate the formal charge on that carbon. You know that we start by looking at the column that the element is in, and carbon is in the fourth column, so we put a four here. We subtract the number of unshared electrons. Well, before we can do that, we better write out the structure exactly. So I'm going to focus on writing out the structure of that carbon. We don't need to show whether these are forward and back. We know they are, but it's immaterial for our discussions. But what is important is that we see that this carbon has a filled outer shell. And carbon has a filled outer shell without having any unshared pairs or unshared electrons at all. So we subtract zero. And then we subtract the number of shared pairs, one, two, three, four. Carbon has no formal charge. You probably knew that. Now, we know how to calculate this when carbon might have a positive or negative formal charge. But what we often find ourselves needing to do in organic chemistry is work backwards. We're shown what the formal charge on an atom is, and we're supposed to figure out what that structure is from looking at the formal charge. Let's do that. We'll take the same structure. And let me put a plus charge here. That plus charge says that if we calculate the formal charge on carbon, that's going to come out to be plus one. And it's up to us to figure out how that can happen what the structure is that will make the formal charge come out to be plus one. So let's rewrite the structure like it should be if it's a plus one. Carbon is in the fourth column. We don't see any unshared pairs. We don't see any unshared electrons at all. If we have three shared pairs, that formal charge is plus one. So when we see a structure written like this, we're supposed to know that the structure really looks like this. We have bonds to two carbons. We see those. The only question is how many bonds to hydrogens do we have? And it turns out to be one. So we have three shared pairs. Subtract three from four and we get plus one. This is a type of ion called a carbocation. Positive ions are called cations and this is a carbon positive ion. And they're very important for some kinds of chemistry. They play a really key role. We'll see them quite a bit. We'll learn something about their structures and their stabilities and their reactivities. And in general, we'll simply write the structure with zigzag lines, a positive charge someplace, and you're supposed to deduce how many hydrogens are attached to that carbon. You can use this approach to figuring that out. Zero unshared electrons. Figure out how many shared pairs you need 
to get the result you're looking for, plus 1. Count the shared pairs with carbons that are shown and add the number of hydrogens it takes to get that formula to come out to be plus 1. Let's take a look at a different example. Carbon anions are also found, found widely in organic reactions. And these are carbon anions, so they're called carb anions. But what's the structure of this guy? I ask you. We're supposed to be able to look at this structure, notice the negative charge on this carbon, and deduce what it is. Let's figure it out. We don't know how many unshared electrons it has. And we don't really know how many shared pairs it has. We need to fill in both of these numbers. Let's write the structure out in a way that lets us deduce it. Here's our carbon. It has a bond to another carbon. We see that. It has a bond to another carbon. We see that. If it has a bond to a hydrogen, that would give it three shared pairs. We could fill in the three there to get to minus one. We need to have this number be a two, which tells us that when we see a negative charge on carbon, we should expect to see an unshared pair. 4 minus 2 minus 3 is minus 1. So there's our negative charge. So carbocations will be written like this, and typically it means that there's one too few bonds so write the carbon bonds, write when he, as many hydrogen bonds as you need to have one too few, we'll end up with a plus one. Here's a carbanion, it's written with a negative charge. That formal charge is telling us that there's an unshared pair on that carbon. So write the bonds to carbon that are shown, write the bond to hydrogen, leaving one unshared pair for the carbanion. Finally, let's look at a case where we have no formal charge, but it's still a reactive species. This structure tells us that there's one unpaired electron. So when we write out the structure, we're seeing that we should write this carbon, carbon bond, and this carbon, carbon bond. We should write a hydrogen, carbon bond, and that unpaired electron. And doing the formal charge calculation, four, we subtract the number of unshared electrons, it's one. We subtract the number of shared pairs, one, two, three. And we have a radical that has no charge on it. It's not a stable neutral molecule, because it has a carbon with an unfilled outer shell. It only has seven electrons. And we'll find that when we see carbon radicals, they're uncharged, still reactive species. So that's the cases for reactive species in carbon, where they have formal charges. Carbocations, they're missing a bond to something. They're missing an unshared pair, so they have a positive charge. Carbanions, they're not missing any electrons, but they're missing a bond to something, so they have a negative charge. And radicals, which are neutral, only have seven electrons, so they're reactive too.